Okay, so exercise two is fairly short, to be honest, and wouldn't take a lot of time. And uh, I'm glad that you guys uh, have done so well for this module, right? Okay, so let's take a look. So let's uh, let's read it. Uh, let's let's read it first. Okay, so exercise two. Okay, so what we have here is is a very short question, short word problem. In a completely randomized design. We didn't talk about a design of experiment. So this is actually the best setup we can ever have. If you want to run design of experiment, you prefer a randomized design, which just says, you know, uh, whether you are receiving the first treatment or the second treatment is completely randomized. You know, no one, uh, you know, there's no bias there. And 12 units were used for the first treatment. We have 15 for the second. You have 20 units for the third treatment. So hopefully by now you're able to see you have three different treatments. You have three different treatments. And this question asks you complete the following ANOVA table. And what we have here is sum of squares, degrees of freedom. There's like a lot of blanks. So the key here, whenever you see an incomplete experiment, uh, sorry, incomplete ANOVA table, you do, you know, the, tree, the key here is to start from the part of the table which has the most information. Okay, what I mean is you probably don't want to start here. There's very little information which is going to help you out. You want to start from the table which has the most of the information. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to use the relationship between those three. If you already done exercise one, you probably remember. Okay, what we know is SSTR plus SSE equals to SS total. So what I have here is 1200 plus this blank, I can call it x equals to 1800. So that means we have to find an x. So what is x here? What do you think is x? 600. 600. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to write it down here. Okay, it's 600. Okay, so what we want to do next is we try to fill in the degrees of freedom column. So this part is not difficult. And uh, I want to start from the very last part. You probably remember the very last part is going to be nt minus 1, right? nt represents the total number of observations. So I used 12 for the first treatment. I used 15 for the second. I used 20 for the last treatment. So what is the total number of ex uh, experimental units we collected here? Okay, all you need to do. 47, excellent. You're going to add up those three numbers, right? You're going to add add up those three numbers, that's going to give you 47. And so 47 uh, minus 1, that's 46. I'm going to write it down here. This is 47 minus 1, 46. Okay, the next I would like to do is, uh, how about here? Anyone can help me out? What is the degrees of freedom right here? Two. Two. Okay. So the reason is because it's K minus one. K represents the number of treatments. We have three treatments, three minus one, that's two. This is excellent. And now you have 46, you have two. Their difference is nothing but 44, right? 46 minus two gives you 44. And mean squares is going to be easy. It's just a sum of squares over this one. Okay, so the first one is 12,000 over two. And 12,000 divided by two, that's uh, 600, right? 600. And the next one is going to be right here, 400 over 44. So 400 divided by 44. Okay, I've already done the math. That's 13.64. You're almost there, right? One more step. So what we have here is the last thing, which is F ratio. F ratio is just 600 over 13.64. If you use your calculator, you should be able to get 43.99. Okay, this is a huge number to be honest. You know, 43 is a huge number. Even without looking my T, uh, my F table, I should be able to tell the p-value. Okay, what do you think the p-value is? Maybe I should, you know, maybe we don't go over the p uh, after a while. I'll let you give me a guess. You know, what do you think the p-value is going to be? Is it going to be super small? Is it going to be super big? Right, you don't know. Small, it's going to be super small, and that's actually right. Okay, so let's try to see why is that. Okay, so first thing, I'm going to draw an F distribution. 
This is not any F distribution. This is F distribution with two degrees, two different sets of degrees of freedom. The first one, the numerator is two. The denominator is 44. I'm gonna write down here, 244. Okay, all F distributions start from zero. And what we have here is 43. 43 is a huge number, just like I said earlier on. That means 43 is gonna be somewhere very far away from zero, right? It's gonna be super far. And the corresponding p-value, as I said earlier on, for F, distribute, F test and chi-square test, you only focus on the upper tail. So those part is gonna be p-value. So as you can see, the entire, the total area under this curve is 100, 100% or maybe one. And now we are focusing on this very, very tiny corner for its p-value. So hopefully you are able to see this is super, super small. This is gonna be very close to zero. You can also double check that using your F table as well, right? It's gonna be super small. Okay, uh, questions on this part? Okay. So what, what yes. would we, would we just put approximately zero for the Yeah, you can do that, you can do that. Okay. I think when you are working on the single assignments, you're probably gonna see one option which says, uh, less than 0.01 and you're going to choose that one unless if you have another one which says close to zero you're going to choose that one okay right good question excellent i'm going to remove this one here okay so after we set up a null hypothesis part b asks you to write out a null and alternative to state a null and alternative for this hypothesis test okay so this is a nova test i'm going to write down here so a nova test is used to compare the population averages to compare the mules, right? Okay, so the null is gonna be, as I said earlier on, the null means there's no effect. So we have three different treatments here. There's no effect across different treatments. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down mu one from the first treatment is the same as the second treatment, is the same as the last treatment. Okay, some of you were able to notice that when you write out a null, we don't write down a number here. We didn't say it is gonna be 20 or maybe, uh, you know, or maybe 1000. We don't have a specific number here. We don't have a specific. This part is indeed true. This is different from many other tests we have seen before. You probably remember some other time we put 50%, we put 0.1, or maybe whatever the context of the question is. For ANOVA, we don't know what they are, uh, you know, we don't know what the, uh, what, sorry. We don't know what the value they are equal to. All we know is they are the same. We don't know whether they are equal to 10, 20, uh, 100, or maybe 12,000. We don't know. All we know is they are the same. So that's why we're gonna remove this part. The mu is they are equal. And uh, the now is they are the equal. And the alternative is gonna, I'm just gonna write down here, not all mules are same or equal. Not all of them are equal. Maybe some of them is different. Maybe mu one is different from mu two, or maybe mu one is different from mu three, right? Okay, we are almost done. So the very last part is, what is our conclusion uh, of this test at 5% significance level? Okay, so in order to answer that, what I like typically like to do is, uh, this is a NOVA test. I like to write down this is a NOVA test. And the test statistic is a F ratio. It's a F ratio. Some other people call it F score, or maybe F uh, test statistic. It all means the same. It's uh, 40.99 and the corresponding p-value, which is close to zero. I'm gonna write down here, very big F ratio with a zero p-value. Right, okay, uh, or maybe a very small p-value. It's a very, very small. So uh, we're gonna write down because the p-value is less than alpha, right? Because we know alpha is 5%. This is a point, point oh 0.05. Okay, so we know we reject, we reject alpha at 5% significance level, sorry.
Okay, we reject it now at five percent standard slope. And now we have to make uh, we have to go back to the uh, to the now and alternative we have here. So, okay. So this actually says we reject uh, now at five percent. So that means the now is not right. We reject it. It's not correct. Our data doesn't support it. Our data, on the other hand, is supposed the alternative. Not all mules are equal. So this is what we have. So our data says not all mules are equal. And that means you can write it down here. Uh, thus, not all mules are the same, right? So that means different treatments actually do give you indeed different effects, right? So the, we don't know exactly whether the first treatment is higher or second treatment because the information is not given here in the question. All you were saying 12, 15, and 20, and they were giving this table. This is all the information we have. Uh, we, we don't know whether which one is higher, but we know they are not the same, right? They are not the same. 